Hey y'all, Bud Rednaro with New Haven, and I know that we are in the middle of the holiday season. But before we get to that, and we have a lot of time, I want to do something that's probably a little bit unexpected. Whether you believe it's a fact or a myth that suicide rates increase during the holiday season, there's no denying that due to the COVID pandemic, suicide rates, which according to the CDC are already at a 50-year high, are predicted to dramatically increase during the next few weeks. What I want to do is go through a verse with you with the hope that it'll be an encouragement to you or someone you love should any doubt or dark thoughts ever creep in. Now, I don't have a lot of time, so get out your Bibles, phones, iPads. We're looking at Jeremiah 29 11. So let's get started. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Let's get started here at the very beginning. Number one, the first takeaway is for I know the plans I have for you. Ask Mary and Martha if they felt cool at the time with God's plans to delay in coming to Lazarus in John 11. Or even if Peter was totally cool with Jesus going to the cross. Before we see the entire picture, the very beginning of God's plans can be a very scary, challenging place to live. And maybe that's where you're living right now but who holds the blueprints to your life for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord our Heavenly Father knows the plans, so we don't need to know we need to trust it's easier said than done I get it but could our plan ever be greater than God's plan are our ways better than God's ways are our thoughts deeper and more vast than his thoughts no Psalm 139 verses 17 and 18 says how precious to me are your thoughts O God how vast is the sum of them if I would count them they are more than the sand guys we'll never have God's plan for our lives completely figured out. So don't be discouraged when you feel lost or confused. Take peace of mind knowing that God, not you, not me, hold the plans for your life. And what kind of plans are they? Number two, the verse goes on to say, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for evil. I always hear this, welfare? You mean he's going to put me on government assistance? No, he's going to put you on God's assistance. And anyone who is happy and blessed, who has endless possibilities and endless hope, is always going to be on God's assistance. And look, the word welfare here is actually the Hebrew word shalom, which covers all aspects of peace. So if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, then his plans are for peace. Now, we're not just talking about the absence of conflict here. Look, we all know that life gets hard sometimes, but we're talking about the enduring calm in the midst of the chaos of life. And why does it say, and not for evil? Because when it comes, not if, it'll be easy to think that this is God's plan for you. Don't get it confused. Evil will come, but God's plan for you is peace in the midst of it not just the absence of it. And then number three, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil. This is the third takeaway, to give you a future and a hope. What does 99.99999% of people have in common? They all just wanna be happy. Everybody wants to be happy. Even people who commit suicide just want to be happy. And this is why I'm doing this right now. Because maybe you all have seen this already, but the CDC released a study over the summer that said one out of four adults actually contemplated suicide. Have you not read Psalm 139 verse 14? I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. When God formed you, it was a sacred, priceless, and wonderful design. The problem is that your soul may not know it all that well. And that's what I'm trying to do right now is to get you to understand that you are a wonderful work of God and that you will know it well. And He has plans for you because you're worth making plans for. And side note, ladies, if you're dating a boy that doesn't ever make plans for you, you're worth making plans for. Oh, and this bears repeating. Ladies, don't let a boy disrespect your body and treat it like anything less than what it is. A wonderful work of God. You say, I am a wonderful work of God and you're going to give account for how you touch me. A wonderful work of God is what you are. So listen, if you're thinking that there is no other option for you than being that one out of four that the CDC was talking about, then you are deciding that your plans are greater than God's plans. Please. Do not cut off your future. Don't choose hopelessness rather than hope. And if you find yourself struggling right now, then you can message me here, facebook.com slash newhavenbc, or you can contact us through our church website at newhavenbc.com. God has a plan for your life to give you a future and a hope.